I think one of the most important principles that we find in the Word of God is the principle of replacement. Uh, one of the best ways to keep the weeds down in your field is to grow a good crop. And the scripture is full of such encouragements. For example, let him who stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who has needs. That's Ephesians 4.28. In other words, God wants to take thieves and turn them into philanthropists. He doesn't simply want them to stop doing what they used to do, but to replace that, to use that energy for something positive. Verses like, uh, don't become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. It's not simply a matter of not doing something. Christianity is not negative and passive. It's positive and active. In Romans 12, 21, we read, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And in Romans 12, 2, we read, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so every time we are confronted with challenges, with, with enemies, with difficulties, with problems, even with failure, this is a golden opportunity to turn that into a lesson, to learn that into an opportunity. I was thinking about Thomas Edison, Thomas Alva Edison. The man's life uh, was uh, strewn with failure. He was brought up in a family where his father was a ne'er-do-well, hardly ever brought home a paycheck. He himself was stricken with scarlet fever that uh, made him almost deaf. By fifth grade, the teacher put him out of school and said he was unteachable. Um, he left home when I think he was 10 or 12 years old. When he was 20, he moved to Boston. His early inventions, nobody wanted them. He finally made a little money in New York and was able to open his own research facility in New Jersey at Menlo Park. And then his young wife at 29 years of age passed away. His building burned to the ground, left him on the edge of bankruptcy. And he famously said on one occasion, I have not failed 10,000 times. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. He had narrowed things down to success. And I think he was in his 80s when he applied for his last patent. That was 1,093. He didn't exactly invent the light bulb, but he found ways to use a vacuum within the bulb and to use a better filament and to uh, use a lower electrical impulse to make the light bulb last much longer. He was the man who developed the electric grid that allowed people to have light bulbs in their home after all. His mother, though she had faced such severe hardship in her life. Her number one rule, which she taught her boy, was this. Never get discouraged if you fail. Learn from it and keep trying. This is one of the marks of true success. Not that we never fail, but that we find ways for God to teach us through that failure and to move forward to success. And, and, you know, I think this is something that the enemy wants to dishearten us with. When we face a temptation, we very often think of overcoming that temptation as merely a draw. I didn't fall for it. I didn't yield. Rather than seeing it as overcoming, as a success, as a victory. And to, when, when we engage the enemy, then to advance, not simply to retreat, but to advance and to claim territory for the Lord. 
So I want you to be encouraged. There's lots of failure, lots of discouragement in life, lots of difficulties, problems that we face. We never imagined these things would come into our lives. But, but the Lord is the master at taking failure and turning it into success, taking uh, weakness and using it for strength, of taking our inabilities and using us so that God gets all the glory. This is a, a grand principle with God. He can take curses and turn them into blessings. And so sometimes when we evaluate our lives, we look at the negatives and say, well, uh, that's useless. That's a, that's a downer. That's, uh, that's a liability. But in fact, the Lord very often uses what men consider liabilities to advance his cause. And so let's not simply th think that when we come up against the enemy, when we struggle, uh, that somehow that's simply a knot on the board. We didn't lose. We, we weren't driven back. But to see this as an advance, to see this as a victory, and to look for ways to move forward. The cross is the great example, isn't it? Where the cross of Christ, what seemed to be the greatest defeat, was turned into the greatest victory. So as we follow our Lord Jesus, we confess that, that we are weak, but he is strong, and he always leads us in triumph. And a man like Thomas Alba Edison is a good example to us of someone who, when he faced failure, simply said, well, now I figured out one way not to do it and to keep moving forward until eventually success comes. And so I, I just want to encourage you. Many of you may be facing struggles and problems and difficulties. You know, some people say, well, I don't necessarily have a happy marriage. Well, you can have a good marriage if in every struggle and difficulty you say, well, I'm learning patience. I'm learning grace. I'm learning forgiveness. How can that be a negative? How can that be a liability? When in the hard times of life, we're actually becoming more Christ-like. And this is the promise of God, that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. The Lord is conforming us to the Lord Jesus, yes, through our failures, through our weakness, through our difficulties. And if we would just keep our eye on heaven, keep our eye on the commander, and realize that he shall not fail nor be discouraged. That's the guarantee. And if we march with him, he always leads us ultimately to victory.